Jason Lee takes the ball well and gets his side going. Batty, who has gone back into the centre. Chance of running at the Canuck defence, does so, penalty corner given. And really, Roger, once he runs at a defence like that, he gets him twisting and turning. They have really very little answer to it at the moment. Not many people have, really, and if he gets on a bit of a roll, uh, he's often criticised for not giving the ball early enough, but at the end of the day, he's one of these guys that uh, enjoys the dribble, and that's why he's in the side. And I think the last time he showed the game, there was 15 corners, and he won about eight of them. Somebody's got to put him in the back of the net eventually. We're on the second one now. Richard Gibson looking to strike at the top of the circle, unless it's moved. Uh, the ball. Gibson it is with the strike, took a deflection. Wesley got down and blocked it. But really, that deflection could have taken the ball anywhere. So no early success for East Grinstead from their two corners. But still enjoying the bulk of the pressure and the territorial advantage. Now, Batty again. Edwards held him up well. And Batty this time penalised. Didn't like the decision, but... He never does. <laughs> he's not alone in that, Roger. No, he's not. He's not the first one. Very technical game, uh, hockey, of course. I'm sure Batty will have seen that totally differently to the umpire, but from my money, sitting up here in the box in this elevated position that we enjoy, it was Batty's stick that came into contact with the defender rather than the other way around. Now, Jasbinder Channa to Sharp. Sharp clashing with Lee. There's Jason Lee, England and Great Britain fame. Canuck have been talking about trying to channel the East Grinstead players, making them play the ball wide as often as possible. No great signs that that has been successful to date as East Grinstead come again. These two sides enjoying a successful season. East Grinstead had a couple of poor results at the top. Canuck still unbeaten, but they've drawn four games now. Which in hockey with three points for a win and only one for a draw is uh, not perfect, but Canuck come into this game unbeaten. And East Grinstead are lying sixth on the table and Canuck just one place behind. Roberts in for Pitcock. Ball coming off the foot of Mark Zander. Free hit to Canuck, which to take quickly. Roberts lifts one over the top. And Bill's just unable to collect that one as the ball fell over his shoulder. There's David Luckers. Just a one goal past him in that Firebrands game in our previous televised game. Sharp away from Zander and Mayer quickly in as well, gathering up the crumbs. Now, Mayer skillfully passed the defender into the circle. Can he get something here? He can, penalty corner. And that's really the first time that Chris Mayer's been able to extend his run into the East Grinstead circle. And just as with Batty at the other end, the warning signs are there. So, Canuck's first penalty corner. We've had some 16 and a half minutes of this first half. Still no score. But Canuck's first corner opportunity. It's still there. And it's in. Beautifully taken as well. Edwards it was. Paul Edwards there. Canuck celebrates. And well they might. A well-worked corner. Exposing the East Grinstead defence. And just gave Edwards the angle to beat Luckers from some 12 yards. Roger. Well, that's the sort of move that a coach... Uh is delighted that happens uh, the first corner a lovely bit of skill by Chris Mayer which developed the corner in the first place gave really the defender no chance turned him inside out got the corner and then the most beautifully constructed short corner move an original one as far as I'm concerned I don't seem to have seen that one before and it worked perfectly and puts the one goal ahead having really been not in the game up to that point which is uh, uh, always important in hockey when, in any game when a side's ahead on points you can get that goal in when it's against the run of play. It's so important. Exactly the same as the game against Firebrand. Same sort of situation, really. Yes, fair comment. I just hope we don't now see the same sort of game that we saw when Firebrand sat back on that one goal lead. In fairness to them, they needed the result that day and, and got it. But it didn't make for pretty or entertaining stuff to watch. No, I don't think that'll happen today. These sides aren't like that. And uh, 
you've got too many skillful players on the field to allow that to happen, I'm sure. There's the Canuck bench, the substitutes off, off it, warming up, but I don't think there are any injuries down there that I can detect. I think it's just a matter of the coach trying to keep the boys warm and a little bit of extra adrenaline flowing through them after that wonderful goal just a few seconds ago. So something of a sucker blow for East Grinstead. They really have dominated the early exchanges. Canuck with their first corner and it was a good finish. Now Robert skillfully for now for Mills. Mills trying to just dink one in for Terrett. Well read there by Mullins. And it's pretty competitive stuff down there. In the player profile at the top of the show, you will have heard Chris Mayer saying these games, East Grinstead and Canuck are always tight. Always just a little bit of niggle around. And I think we could be in for a very lively game here indeed. Two very experienced sides, everything to play for. They're both just off the, the pace at the moment at the top of the Pizza Express First Division. But the result today could well close some of that gap. Yes, it wouldn't take very much to get both these sides back in contention. Just a decent run, a couple of good results, as you say, and they'll both be back uh, pressing for the top three. The East Grinstead boys were just, well, just a matter of seconds, Roger, I gather, away from beating Havant a couple of weeks ago now. Last hit of the game, I think it was. That's very tight. We saw Havant up here on the Sky Sports Hockey Special beating Starport virtually with the last hit of the game as well. So, so hockey's a 70-minute game, and the first, second, and the last second are of equal importance. Same player as well. Callum Giles. Callum Giles, yes, yeah. yes. Goal of the month, wasn't it? It was indeed, yes. And we've had a few good contenders for this one, and that yeah, corner will be another again. one. Now, Mayer. And penalty corner number two. He screens his defence, just in a little bit of disarray there. And ben Sharp and Chris Mayer linking well. And they need to concentrate hard in that East Grinstead defence. Just lost a little bit of their discipline in the last few minutes. The goal has obviously rattled them a bit. 15 minutes of this first half still remaining. And it's another move. Sharp. Edwards this time with his back to goal. Mayer with a chance. Flicks it in, but the whistle's gone. I didn't see what that was for, Roger. I think it was offside. Offside, right. Now, oh, head bundled over, and I think that'll be problems for Sharp. Indeed, it will. Peter Broughton on the far side, pulling him across. The umpires stamped their authority on this game very early on, and they haven't shown any signs of letting go of it. And there's Peter Broughton dwarfing Ben Sharp there and showing him the green card. I think that's very consistent umpiring because both the umpires have been harsh on that pushing in the back, uh, which was happening there. East Grinstead have been in trouble for it, and so have uh, Caddock, and I think they need to stamp on it early on, let the game flow, get the players to stop this sort of pushing in the back. There's quite a lot of it goes on, and it's nice to see these umpires picking it up. And indeed treating it very consistently. But I think that could be the last green card that we see for a while. Yes, I think it'll change colour shortly. And uh, the East Grinstead player there colliding with the advertising board, which is uh, taking a bit of a hit, quickly repaired. A sharp, penned back by his own corner flag. And a good steal there by East Grinstead into the circle, looking for something. Penalty corner, good skills there, Zander. Well, you were talking about indoor hockey earlier, Nick. That was a typical indoor steal. And uh, it now needs East Grinstead to come up with a short corner routine and somewhere in the region of Canucks because they've got to, they keep getting corners and not uh, not making them count. And in hockey, you've got to make one in three, one in four count. Well, I hope it's not an omen, but against Firebuns, they seem to have well, it was countless at, towards the end. I think it was 18 corners without success. Maybe today will be different. Now, head, good save, but it's in. The rebounds there. They get it right on this occasion. First shot was blocked by Wesley, but the ball came back and no mistake. Richard Gibson, the scorer. Good centre forwards goal. That's sniffing, looking for the half chance. And when it came back, he put the ball on target. He got the ball high as well. And that ties it up at one each. And Richard Gibson, I think that's his sixth goal in three matches now. So he's beginning to... 
almost be prolific. Both sides made a couple of substitutions. Uh, Phil Wallace has come on at the back now. He's switched to captain for Matt Bloxham. And John Coos has come on to see whether those make a difference to the game. Uh, Hughes Rowlands powerfully down and into the 25 now. He's got three shirts running, penalty corner given. And I think the pace there, catching East Grinstead by surprise. There were plenty of white shirts around him, but Hughes Rowlands there in shot. Tall, rangy player, and showed good control there. Well, it was a decision which uh, East Grinstead debated. Luckers did well with the save, and this time the clearance is a good one. And I think I think that'll be problems for Batty. No, I think it'll be Char problems for Chana actually as well because Chana did the stick lifting. It'll be interesting. To <laughs> <laughs> they're both great friends. Well, maybe problems for nobody, Roger. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> oh, there's problems for the umpire. They haven't done anything to either of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps they were as uh, unsure about what has happened as what we obviously were. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Mills down that left-hand side. Seconds ticking away to half-time, just about a quarter of a minute left. Interesting first half, full of endeavour from both sides. And no little skill. Canuck set out as one of their ambitions uh, in this first uh, 35 minutes, was to change the point of the attack. They've been marginally successful in that. They take no advantage with them into the half-time interval. The score is tied up at one goal each we'll be back in just a few moments with all of the second half highlights and hopefully a few more goals you're watching sky sport half underway if you're with us before the interval you'll know that there's everything to play for scores absolutely level cannock taking the lead in the 17th minute through paul edwards and the equalizer coming in the 24th minute through Gibson, Richard Gibson for his screen. So one goal each. Joining me in the comedy box today is Roger Dakin, former, former coach of East Grinstead and also a former England indoor goalkeeper. Roger, did you enjoy the first half? Yeah, I did. There was a lot of skill about and uh, I've been told that uh, English hockey is looking for skill all the time, although I have to say that uh, Although uh, earlier on you said there's a lot of internationals uh, around, there's only two of them on the pitch which are current, which uh, one's a goalkeeper. And the other one's just uh, struck the ball across there and got a long corner, Chris Mayer. But it seems to be that the, we don't pick enough of the skillful players for the uh, national side these days. But there's plenty of them on view today. That's Chris Mayer. Again, banging that ball in, but just getting underneath it. I don't know whether it's because the hands are cold, but there'll be one or two crosses that have gone in in the air, which have been something of a waste. Certainly very fresh. Mercifully, the snow has held off. We've got the lights on here now as well. The balance of play in the first half was perhaps marginally in favour of East Grinstead, but Cannock did come back into the game for periods, particularly just after that goal that they scored. Certainly not much in it. Now, Sharp. This is a good run from Sharp down the middle. Still got it. Free hit to Cannock. Oh, Mayer. Cannock will be pleased the way they've kept Mayer quiet. Just that one run that led to the first corner that indeed led to the goal. And an opportunity late in the game when he had a one-on-one -on -one with Phil Wallace and rather made a poor fist of it. Uh, here is Wallace. I'm sure he'll be pleased to be back playing again. A very frustrating time for him. Lee. Side for Zander. All the way out on this right hand side for Head. And uh, the winger there just taking his eye off the ball at the critical moment, allowing it to roll out of play. Can it get another free hit? Head hadn't retreated the statutory five yards. 
Maya plays it short for Chana. Azander forward for Gibson. Batty was over on to his left, free just outside the circle for the feet. Both sides will need to be five yards from this free hit, given just outside the Canuck circle there. Zander keeps it strong, finds a way into the circle. And a 16-yard hit given. It was all, all arms and legs there. Zander kicking himself. Would have wanted to make more from that, Roger. Yes, I think he would. I, and I think he thought he had, but uh, he didn't have the ball quite under control. He just let the ball run half a yard too far forward and that was what uh, cost him the opportunity of getting either a telling pass or a corner Chana and Maya there playing the ball out of play for Chana both sides making early mistakes in the second half it is a very cold day and there's a little bit of snow coming down and I think that some of the forwards are finding it's difficult to get their fight, the first touch going. Ah, sharp. Nice one for Hughes Rowlands. Good defending there by Barnes, but the whistle goes. Free hit given to Canuck. There's Hughes Rowlands. A couple of good runs from him in the first 35 minutes. Probably not enough from Canuck's point of view. Ah, uh, Pidcock turning into trouble. And the free hit goes in East Crinsford's favour. There's a great tackle there from Zander. Important position. And Wallace throws the ball forward, but it was a long and hopeful pass for Batty, who was hiding a little bit behind Roberts, waiting for the ball to come to him. David Mayer. Jazz Channa down in front of us. There's Channa, good skills from him. Sharp for Channa again. It's all a bit tight down this left hand side for Canuck. Good skills from Channa, good advantage played also by the umpire. Mayer into the circle. Luckers did well to put the block on. Still Mayer, penalty corner given. And Mayer and Luckers, of course, who know each other very well. Interesting little challenge there for the forward. Well, that was a beautiful bit of hockey, all brought about by Jazz Chandler's skill down this left-hand side. He opened up that three players all around him and suddenly he was in space, hit a beautiful ball across the middle and uh, put the pressure on the East Coast defence. Uh, there's the push-out. It's a more orthodox than one we saw earlier on. It's gone in! <laughs> Mills it is who takes the credit for it. The ball broke on this left-hand side and John Mills, as he does so often for Canuck, in the right place at the right time and forcing it home high past the defenders to put Canuck back ahead. So, ten minutes gone in this second period. Canuck, for the second time in the game, take the lead. Again, it's a penalty corner. This time, John Mills. Roger, again, a little bit against the run of play. Well, it is, but it just shows how I was saying earlier on how important corners are. East Coast have had five and scored one. Canuck have had three and scored two. And uh, I should think Malcolm Wood is sitting on the bench very happy at the moment because every corner is very dangerous for, for Canuck. Very nice, simple work moves. And uh, East Coast is back on the attack, though. Now, Bloomer in for Verdi. Verdi into the circle. And the whistle went on. Batty! And a snapshot there by Batty, but cannot get it away. I thought uh, East Crinsley were on the verge of a corner themselves, Roger. Uh, they should have had one there, without a doubt. That was a, a wonderful riposte from East Crinsley. Uh, Barnes on a run all the way through, but just went one too many. Mm. Now, this is dangerous for East Crinsley. Canuck. Well, that's obstruction. Canuck on the break. Now, head. Head past Channa, did well, but not past Sharp. Now Rowlands, losing out, Head and Batty, Verdi ahead of them. 
Batty off the foot of Channa, free hit to East Grinstead. More urgency now, of course, from East Grinstead. Into the circle. And again, a snapshot, but yeah, Roberts doing well. But the penalty corner's been given. Yeah, his feet on the edge of the circle there as Dale Mullins came for the shot. Roberts just caught his ankle just inside the D. And there'll be great discussions at the top of the East Grinstead circle there. They'd dearly like to get one back here. Now, see if young Barnes can keep this push out on the floor. I'm sure his father will be ribbing him about that earlier one. There's the push out. Wallace. Took a deflection, where's this down? Penalty, penalty stroke. stroke, yes, the ball up into Channa's body. And Channa on the goal line, needed his body to keep it out. So, umpire McQuater there, just pointing out to Paul Edwards that he was perfectly well placed, as indeed he was. And it'll be a penalty stroke. So, an excellent opportunity for East Grinstead to tie things up. Right. There he is, Jason Lee, interested with this... Shot from seven yards, the Lee against Wesley. I think it's East Grinstead's first penalty stroke of the season. Right. Lee in white, Wesley the giant in blue. Almost fills that goal. And Lee makes no mistake, ties it up at two each. No more than East Grinstead deserve. Jason Lee there. Boldy going into the top of the net, beating Wesley from seven yards, ties it up. Two goals each, and Roger, this game living up to its billing. Well, it is. I mean, East Grinstead coach uh, Andy Barnes will be absolutely delighted with the way they came back from that goal because they have very, very strong pressure. I mean, that uh, situation that brought the uh, penalty stroke was built about by Dale Mullins, the left half on the left-hand side of the circle. So, uh, an all-out attacking position. And both teams still absolutely going for the win. There's no signs of anyone saying, well, OK, we'll stick with a point. And uh, that was a... Looked like a good tackle there, which was penalised. Important yeah, time for the umpires to keep themselves going now as well, while the pressure gets on. Came off the Eastern Sid defender. It'll be a long corner to Kanak on this left-hand side. Really has been a super game of hockey, this. Chana. It's his skill that set up Canuck's lead. They enjoyed in the 45th minute. There he is, Jazz Chana. Also, I thought Rajon Chana has run an excellent bit of umpiring because Chana did have his stick clattered. Umpire, quite rightly, allowing play to go on, where very often we've seen the whistle going and everything broken down. And it was a lovely cross from Chana, of course. There's another good break here. Now, gaps opening up in both defences. Good defence there by East Grinstead. Ed gets the free hit, takes it quickly. Everything done at 100 miles an hour at the moment from both sides. Here's Rollins, nicely passed Batty. Xander's got it. Now, this is Verdi. There's a tremendous amount of skill on view today, Nick. There is, and I think uh, considering the conditions, both sides should be very, very pleased with the way their respective teams have played. You could be sure as soon as I said that somebody puts a pass out of the way, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's David Whittaker's trick. Yeah. Uh, Zander. Oh, there's another bad pass there from Zander. Just tucking the ball under his arm, perhaps a little bit lazily. Now Edwards. Beautifully balanced now. Two goals each. Still got 20 minutes remaining. Chanata Sharp. Hughes Rollins. Deceptive pass there. Looking for Sharp. And Rollins there just buffeting into Bloomer. It'll be a free hit to East Grinstead that Phil Wallace will take. There's Wallace. Verdi. Stepping it inside for head, nicely done by him. Now Lee. Poor yeah. ball there from Lee. Just overpaced, isn't it? Well, there was a good break on there. If that ball had found Batty, Kanak was stretched. The 
The play between the 25s has been very, very fierce, very competitive, and a lot of skill, but we haven't really seen that final pass and shots going in on target. Now, perhaps as both sides start to tire, there may be a few more openings coming the forwards' ways. It's a great run into the circle there, penalty corner given. Luckers and the East Grinster defenders furious. I couldn't tell from up here what the umpire had seen, but he was a far better place than we were. Well, I'm not sure he was really. He was on the far side of the play there, so uh, he didn't get a signal from the other umpire. Dangerous place to give a corner. Anyway, corner it is, and maybe the anxiety in that East Grinster defence just showing there for a moment. And again, it was an interesting one, but the player on the ball just forced to obstruct, just getting the ball caught between his feet. Bloomer, making a bloomer. And able to get the ball away on this side. And it's a wild tackle come in by Rowlands. Hughes Rowlands. He's supposed to replace their uh, first goal scorer. Peter Head come back on. Good tackle there by Roberts. It's Coves. Forward for Mayer. Barnes has coped with Mayer rather well, I think, Roger. Yes, he has. Uh... A break on here as Edwards misses out. Batty on just why Wesley Fine, did sir. well. Wesley did well, credit to the goalkeeper there, closing Batty down, narrowed the angle, and the shot when it came in from Batty, just deflecting off the big Cannock keeper, and out for a corner, and that was a chance, a real chance. Zander, it's all very tight. Now Hughes Rowlands has come back to help his outnumbered defence. That was a good tackle by Hughes Rowlands there, an early ball from Zander would have... Uh... Pretty big problems for Cannock there. Now oh, Cannock. Oh, no. Brilliant take there by Verdi. And play pulled up. Ball coming off the foot of, of Batty. Yeah, it was good umpiring though. Alan McQuaid didn't see it. Peter Broughton, the other end, was alert to it. I think they've had a good game, Roger. I don't know whether you'd agree with me, but they've worked as a team and they've let the, the players get on with it on a cold day. And the fact that we've had a good time up here, I think, is partly due to the, the skill of the umpires. Not too much whistle. No, they've done pretty well. It's not the easiest game in the world to do. <laughs> Lovely skills there. Batty just chopping his stick over the top of the ball. Now in for Verdi. Can he find a way through? He might do here. Oh. And the free hit given. The penalty corner given, in fact. It was just outside the circle, I think, initially. Seven and a half minutes to go. Wallace this time it's left, and the save on the line by Channer was a good one, but the whistle had already gone. Well, Sharp comes back into the action to the roars of the Cannock contingent here in the crowd. So Cannock back to 11 men. It's interesting, the two sides out there today. Yeah, we'll find Mr Mullins going for a walk here. Mullins, who took a green card in the in the first half for the chat, is uh, leaving the action. Well, again, that's consistent umpiring, uh, Nick, because uh, they've, uh, the swinging sticks have been penalised for both sides. Yes, I think uh, some justice in that. Mullins, the unfortunate player. Uh, Mayer. This is good from Mayer. Still Mayer. And Rollins. And it's gone in. He didn't go all of it particularly well. But Cannock are back ahead. Three goals to two. It was Mayer's strong run. And Rollins' is finish. And I don't think that East Grinton's woes are over yet. They are down to ten men. They are three goals to two behind. Pitcock, which is frustrating. He's said they need to get the ball and they've got to go route one. They've got it. 
predictably cannot close it down very quickly. There has been a lot of great hockey in this game. Canuck bench looking anxious, but they can celebrate in a moment. And it's not all over yet as far as the action is concerned. It is now. The whistle goes. Canuck have come through to win this very, very exciting Pizza Express Premier Division game by three goals to two. A thoroughly entertaining game. I hope you agree. We'll be back after the break with all the rest of the Pizza Express League results and a look at those very important league tables. You're watching Sky Sports. They've won the cup! This is what they dream of winning. The glorious cup, the ultimate prize. For that club, there will be the realisation of a dream. For the rest, the battle is intense, a constant struggle, the chance to write their names in history. Sky Sports will...